We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Come, people of God, let us sing the praises of the one who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. For once we were not a people at all, but now we are God's people. Let's worship God together. Thank you for joining us for worship on this fifth Sunday of Easter. We're glad that you're here with us. You may want to press pause right now and grab a few things that you'll find helpful for our worship service. Your Bible may be a candle to light and whatever you have to use as your communion emblems. Once you've gathered what you need, then unpause and Ken will lead us into worship together. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, On this day when we celebrate Mother's Day, when some denominations celebrate the Christian home and its importance in faith formation, remind us that we are responsible for caring for each other. We are called to lift up rather than tear down, to support rather than abandon, to reach out when others have turned away. Give us hearts of love that in all places and times, we may be a witness to the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. Now let us lift our voices together, saying the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture this morning is 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 to 10. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, 
I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy scripture. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We're in this together. That phrase is everywhere, spoken by our governor, by Dr. Acton, our health director, We see it in memes on social media, and it is an ever-popular hashtag. But what exactly are we in? What is this? I've heard it described as crazy times, as disruptive times, as unusual times. A pandemic is all of this and so much more. But more than anything, we find ourselves in between what is and what should be. This time of year is one typically filled with proms and after-prom gatherings, graduation ceremonies and parties, weddings and receptions, banquets, baseball and softball, and track and soccer. But that's not where we find ourselves, is it? The reality of what is is far from the norm. When we would ordinarily gather together, we find ourselves physically apart. Nothing is as it should be. We are struggling. Our hearts break for the missed opportunities and events that can never be captured. Now, as our state begins to open back up for business, we add another layer of frustration to the mix. Some think we've waited too long and others think we're moving too fast. Opinions are all over the board and we get sucked into the narrative, trying to make sense of it all. Meanwhile, we are divided in our actions and what we believe to be best practices. It's crazy. We're stuck. We long for what it should be, how it should be. Christian educator and author Parker Palmer calls this the tragic gap, this gap of what is and what should be. It holds our disappointment and it breaks our hearts into a thousand shards, sharp-edged fragments that sometimes become shrapnel aimed at the source of our frustrations, our disappointments, and sometimes it's aimed at other people. These disappointments and pain that are not transformed by love and mercy are transmitted. We have a choice as to how we respond to the tragic gap in our own lives and the tragic gaps in the world. We can lash out, remain bitter and angry, and allow our negative responses to slowly erode our identity, or we can allow God to transform our pain with mercy and love. This begins with remembering our true identity as disciples of Christ and that we are not alone. We are in this together. 
1 Peter was written to Jewish and Gentile believers in exile to offer encouragement and instruction on how best to live as a new community. It was written to Jewish and Gentile believers in exile who were seen as social outcasts in their different communities, being persecuted for having different beliefs. The author is intent on transforming these beleaguered believers, not simply by telling them what to do, but more deeply by reminding them of their identity in Christ. And he begins with a potent image of stones being built into God's temple. Jesus is the living stone whom these believers have embraced and in whom they have found their hope. The author reminds the believers, you yourselves are being built like living stones into a spiritual temple, being made into the image of Christ. This image of stones that Peter draws on is both complex and beautiful. When we look back to the first chapter, we find Peter telling them these stones are called to hope. They're called to be holy. They're called to love one another deeply. And they are to desire what will bring about their growth as believers. In other words, these exiled believers are to stand in the tragic gap between what is and what could be. In today's text, Peter calls on these faith communities to put away attitudes that divide them and to pick up and put on the things that bring them together as a community. Peter believed that Jesus brings us together, and that is much more important than that which can tear us apart. Verse 1 of this chapter was not included in our reading for today, but it says, Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. These things, according to Peter, are obstacles that create barriers to unity in the community. Peter calls on these new Christians to put away these divisive attitudes and actions and instead focus on Christ the cornerstone of their faith. He reminds them it is Christ at the core of their togetherness. When we live as the world calls us to live, we live as individuals. However, when we live in the way we are called by Christ to live, we are reminded that we're in this together. We're unified When our hearts have been broken into a thousand sharp-edged shards, when we encounter those tragic gaps of what is and what should be in our lives, Peter's letter encourages us to respond to our pain and disappointment in ways that end divisiveness and bring about unity in our lives and in our communities and allow our collective pain and disappointment to be transformed by God's mercy and love. We're in this together. This is how we grow in our faith. It's how God builds us into a holy priesthood. We are living stones. God has called and cemented us together by mutual love, honor, and respect. Our transformation is rooted in God's goodness and mercy. Our encounter with God both empties us and opens us to be formed into the spiritual house of which Christ is the cornerstone. The followers of Christ that Peter wrote to were given a vision of what should be, but they were faced with the harsh reality of what is. In this tragic gap, they were reminded of who they were and whose they were. They were God's people, recipients of God's great mercy and love. It is this mercy and love that bridges the tragic gap between what is and what should be. Today's story reminds us 
that this is a season in our lives, a reality we'd rather not have experienced. But through it all, like those first Christians, we can withstand the craziness because we stand together. We know we are God's people. God's mercy and love is for us in this time and place, in the midst of Of all that has been shattered, we remain God's people. We remain in this together. Amen. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. God of all creation, Become for us once again the solid foundation upon which we build our daily lives. We gather before you this first day of the week, this fifth Sunday of Easter, to align our lives to the strong teaching and life of Jesus Christ, our cornerstone. Receive our praise and thanksgiving as expressions of faith and love. We come to you, God, as people who desire to learn and serve like Christ. We are ready to receive your blessing and direction today. As we continue through this season of Eastertide, we pray for those who do not share our Easter joy. We pray for those who live in the shadow of darkness and despair. For those who live with the hopelessness of shattered dreams, trust betrayed, opportunities lost, love denied. For those who live without faith or hope or love, who see no resurrection, no hope of new beginnings for themselves or for the world. Be with your people. Shine the light of resurrection on them so they too may come to know you. We lift to you those who are in our daily prayers, those in need of hope, healing, and peace. We lift to you those we do not know that they too may come to know your love and mercy. We lift all those affected by COVID-19 for our community, our country, our world. As we continue in silence, hear our prayers. Loving and merciful God, we release all our prayers, all our burdens, all our anxieties to you now, knowing that you are here and we are loved. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Drink wine together on our 
this bread become a people of living stones. We who drink this wine become a people of salvation. We enrich our faith and trust as we gather together again at this table for this sacred remembrance. In these moments of communion together, may we experience the confidence of children who know they are loved and accepted completely. Communion is a time when we reflect on what this table means to us. We remember that it began that night in the upper room when Jesus gathered with his disciples around the table. He took an ordinary loaf of bread, blessed it, and broke it, saying, This bread is for you. Take and eat. Remember me. He lifted up the cup blessed it, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant, and this cup is for you. Take and drink. Remember me. As we gather virtually around this table, we remember that all are invited, and we remember the promise that when we gather together, when we tell the story and give the blessing, when we break the bread and drink from the cup, we will discover a foretaste of love made real and of a world made whole. So take, eat and drink, and remember. As we continue to worship through technology, I want to take a moment to thank you for your continued support during this time through your tithes and offerings. You can donate online via our website at www.fccravenna.org or mail your check to 6251 Gladys Street 
or utilize bill pay through your banking institution. We are better together when we join in music or mission or ministry or fellowship. We discover that God makes us better being built upon one another like living stones in the house of the Lord. Let us join together now as we receive the tithes and offerings you have brought. We have this common faith and common calling to be in ministry together. Let us pray. Receive these gifts this morning, O God, author of every good gift. Out of the bounty of our hearts, we respond with faithful generosity and love. May these gifts become blessings for others as they have been blessing for us. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. May the love of God take away your millstones and place you high up on the rock that you may see more clearly the calling of God in your life. Into the hands of God, commit your spirit in the name of the risen Christ. Go in peace. I wish for you, my friend, this happiness that I found on God you can depend it matters not where you're bound I'll shout it from the mountain top hey world I want my world to know the Lord of love has come to me 